morning friends i am here again for the my course aircraft systems which is in the 6th semester aeronautical student of institute of aeronautical engineering hyderabad today i am in lecture number 23 and the topic for this lecture is working principle of pneumatic systems air pressure brake and pneumatic power systems so these are the topics which i am going to cover for this lecture this topic objectives of this lecture is the learning objective of this presentation to develop the students knowledge of the vacuum system to meet the basic function in vacuum system that supply essential instruments of the aircraft and ability to detect abnormal or unsafe operation and responding to a vacuum system failure okay so these are the objective before i start my lecture i should go again for a small revision and we have seen that i am in module 3 before that module module 1 and the module 2 i have covered we have seen in module 1 that there are four major pillars of aircraft systems first pillar is the airframe or structural system the second pillar is vehicle system and the third pillar is avionic system and the fourth pillar is mission system we have seen in in that section that when we talk about airframe system we have to see about the wing we have to see about the fuselage we have to see about empennage in empennage we have horizontal tail vertical tail tail boom of the fuselage in <coughs> fuselage system we can see the nose part center part and the rear part their number of avionic systems luggage cargo every passenger pilot everything is accommodated in the main fuselage part if you talk about the wing wing is in aerofoil shape which produces the maximum lift however inside the wing the fuel is also put there are number of other equipments are fitted wings are also carrying the engine landing gears and so on once we talk about the vehicle system in vehicle system we have electrical system we have the hydraulic system we have a oxygen system we have oil system we have icing and anti icing system and so on and the, in this we are discussing in fact the pneumatic system and in the pneumatic system we have it is a part of the aircraft vehicle system only so we are in the second pillar we are discussing in the third module the second pillar of the vehicle system then if you talk about the avionic system in avionic system we see the communication system where we talk from aircraft to the atc atc to the pilot also from the any ground stations or ndbs pilot and the, the pilot will have the communication with different types of sources second part is the navigation system which gives the direction of the aircraft in which direction aircraft has to go so that is to reach to the given destination without any drifting from its original position third is the very important which is the flight management system mostly it is a computer system which take the senses of all type of weather condition flow condition and uh, it is monitoring all the things and giving the signal to the autopilot or the pilot in the cockpit so that aircraft maintains a given direction so it is very important part of the aircraft last but not the least the mission system which mostly the uh, military aircrafts are made for that and the main purpose of the mission system is to 
perform the task as per the given scenario. Just like if it is the flood, the flood relief work has to be performed. If it is the fire, the fire extinguishing has to be done. If it is the natural calamities like earthquake and uh, some other activities, the saving of the person of, or if any wire rope of any uh, uh, system is broken. So we have seen very recently by the Indian Air Force, they have rescued the people who are hanging on the wire rope in India. Same way for other things like if you see about the Indian Navy, they have the reconnaissance, they have the surveillance, they have the anti submarine warfare, they have the maritime uh, reconnaissance and so many things, so many performance they are doing. This is called the mission and especially another thing, weapon systems, they are the this, uh, this uh, launching of rockets, missiles, bombs, ammunition, guns. All the things are part of the mission systems. So aircraft, if it is designed for something, aircraft has to perform a particular mission for a given condition. So here I am here. So I will proceed with this pneumatic or the vacuum system. So pneumatic is also called the vacuum system. Okay. So sometimes called vacuum pressure system. The pneumatic system is also called sometimes vacuum pressure system, aircraft pneumatic system, power instruments, landing gear, flaps, air conditioning, windows, doors and more. In light aircraft, suction pressure gauges shows vacuum system pressure. So just you can see here that what are the item which item of the are the, what are the components of the aircraft which we can use the vacuum system. So aircraft pneumatic system power instruments Landing gear, flaps, air conditioning, windows, doors and more. In light aircraft, suction pressure gauges and this shows the vacuum system pressure. This you can see here. These are the suction pressure gauges and these gauges are working with the help of suction pressure or the vacuum pneumatic pressure. Here we have the pumps, relief valves, vacuum air filter suction gaze, gyro instruments, altimeter, attitude indicator and the heading indicator. So this is the heading indicator and this is the attitude indicator. You should have the pump. They will have one pump. They will have one relief valve. As you can see here, this is the relief valve. This is the pump here. Here we have the vacuum air filters so, and suction gaze, gyro instruments. These are the instrument which gives the direction and the and this uh, attitude that at what it is rolling or pitching these all things you can see by the help of these equipments and these equipments are operated by the pneumatic system so uh, that we have to take care of pneumatics used in small aircrafts if you see the small aircrafts so here we have the gyro compass this you can see here then artificial horizon this is the artificial horizon and this is the turn coordinator. Okay, so this we can see this all the three instruments are fitted here and these are used for a general aviation aircrafts and they are the artificial horizon here. Second one is the gyro compass. It will give the direction of the aircraft and third one is the turn indicator. So how this aircraft is turning. This you can find out by this type of pneumatic equipments. Pneumatic system components, if you talk about, we have some components, the air pump. The air pump is used to give the pressure for the air which is supplied. Then next one is the vacuum regulator. It regulates the pressure and amount of air has to be circulated in the system. Then we have inlet air filter. This filters the air and removes the impurities which is available on the system. Overboard vent line, there is a line which is called the overboard vent line. Gauges, attitude indicator, we should have attitude indicator and the heading indicator. So this is the heading 
and this is the attitude. Attitude in indicator, heading, and this is the suction gauge. And this system is shown here a very uh, simple way. So, attitude indicator and heading indicator, system indicators, suction gauge, gyro flag, and enunciator lights. So, these are the here is the flag, this is the flag, and this is the this is the light. Okay, so this you can see here how it is working. So this here is the inlet. The air is entering from here. Then it goes to the air filter. Here impurities. Impurities like water, sediments, pollutants are removed by the filter. Okay, next this goes to the after filter, it goes to the system attitude indicator. It will show the rolling and pitching of this aircraft, and here it will show the heading which direction it is moving north, south, west. This thing it is showing from here. If you see, it goes to the here, then it will go to the suction gauge, it will indicate how much pressure is there. Then it goes to the return line. This is the return line, and this return line will go to the vacuum regulator. This vacuum regulator will try to regulate the pressure as much required and here is the air pump. This pump is rotated by the help of electrical or the engine and it is suction is created by this and it is going to the overhead vent. It is going to the outside of the system. Here we have this type of flag. This, If the red flag is there, it means it is not working. And here on light, if it is working, it will also indicate that if it is a red light, means the system has got low pressure or it is not working properly. So we should make sure that this red flag and this red light should not be available on the gauges. Then only aircraft is operating in a correct way. Now I will talk about the filter. The filters used in the vacuum system or the pneumatic system. So pneumatic air filters, it prevents the system contamination, removes air particulates, clean air is essential to good operation. So how it is working? Just you can see, the air is entering from this, entering from center and it is coming out from this like this. After filtering, if anything is sediments are there, this will be accumulated here and here is a knob and it will drained out from there. So, prevent system contamination means the system should not have any contamination inside. So, it will make that air is cleaned. Remove air particulates. So, if in the air any particulates are available or any moisture parts are available, it will be moisture is accumulated here and it is it can be drained out and essential is good operation. So, clean air is required and this clean air is obtained by the help of the air filter and air filter just you can see air filter is the first component after entering the air. So, it is making sure that air is cleaned and it is in a good condition so that the water or any other contamination if it is entering the it may create the problem it may also give the corrosion, it may give the wrong values in the system. Now, pressure regulator, this is inlet is here. Your flow is entering from here and it is going from another side. So, pneumatic pressure regulator prevents system over pressurization. It means if the, your system is working at 10 bar, so it should operate less than 10 bar. If Pressure is going to 11 bar or more. This will be lift up and your it will be bypassed. It will be uh, air will be going outside. So it is used for as a safety measure. Their system should not get uh, blasted or it should not get uh, uh, problems. So systems should operate in a given condition. Ensures proper calibration. This also gives that 
if the system is operating at a given pressure and it is calibrated properly. Next is air pumps. We have different types of air pumps and it is shown here. And these air pumps are the heart of this pneumatic system is pressure or vacuum air pump usually engendered. Most of these pumps, it may be the pressure pump or the vacuum pump. So if you see here, here is what? This is a vacuum pump, not a pressure pump. This is because it is sucking. It is generating the vacuum inside and it is working. But if you fit here before that and it is giving pressure, then it is a pressure pump. So that is the difference. So this is called heart of the pneumatic system is pressure or the vacuum air pump. Two basic types, wet air pump used engine oil to lubricate pump internally. Dry air pump, more common have graphite veins inside pump casing, self lubricating self lubricate as pump rotates. So these are the wet or the dry. Wet air pumps use engine oil to lubricate pump internally. So engine oils are used and in dry air pump more common have graphite veins inside the pumps casing self lubricate as pump rotates. So in this lubrication is required but a graphite material is used. This makes the lubrication self, this makes the self lubrication of the pump. We, in this video, we don't need any pump to lubricate also. Uh, we need not to spend the aisle also. So this is the benefit of these things. Pneumatic system operation, uh, this same diagram it is here again. So filter air is pulled through the system by the vacuum pump. So in the first diagram I have shown the parts only here. Pneumatic system components I have shown and here I am showing you the how it is working. So this you can see here that filter air is pulled through the system by the vacuum pump. Here is the vacuum pump here. This is the vacuum pump. So it is sucking from here. It is generating the vacuum. Evacuated air passes through the instrument case causes gyro to spin. So here what happened? It is sucking. So here the gyros are there. These gyros are spinning. Spinning gyros provide rigidity in space for instrument references. So this spinning gyros provide rigidity for the instrument references. Air exhaust through gyro pressure gauge exhaust port. So this air exhaust is through gyro pressure gauge exhaust port. Gauge pressure system pressures gauge system gauge measures system pressure. This gauge is measures the pressure of the system of how much pressure is there pressure of the system. Failure warnings, here failure warnings are given. Given by red flag or red light. If system not working or there is a lack of pressure, this warning will come out and this will work accordingly. Action before every flight what action we have to take for this pneumatic system? Check for all leaks. We have to see that every pipe here joints, this all the places, there should not be any leak. That is the first thing. Check the hose and clamp for oil leak. So you just, you have to see all the these clamps everywhere you should observe very minutely that there should not be in any leak. Check for loose fittings and allow into the system. Do not allow anyone to lose fitting. Check that here all this nut, this boards, everything is 
all unions are tight properly and sealant is applied okay so check for external damage you, you have to see that there should not be any external damage any corrosion any crack any type of abnormalities you have to see these all things by help of the magnifying glass and during the before flight servicing during bfs before flight servicing these all things have to be checked by the line man technician technician then only aircraft is given to the pilot okay so we have to ensure that there should not be any leak there should not be any damage all the unions your all the pipes are properly tight there is a proper sealant on the system failure causes what are the failure and how these things are causing so main cause is the system contamination if your filter is not working and more bigger particle is entering inside there will be a chances of system failure due to the contamination solid particles in pneumatic system damage pump and plug valves so if anything like this particle if there are some metal particle if anywhere it is broken inside and it is going without the filtration it will also damage the system liquid from oil water or engine cleaning solvent if any liquid is entering it may be from oil or the water or the engine cleaning solvent it should not enter in the system restriction leaks within the system a loose fitting or damaged hose we should make sure that leak should not be there and chances of leaks are there if the fitting is loose this all the unions and other things they should be tight in properly by the given torque and a proper sealant has to be applied for every pipe where it is required a loose fitting out the damaged hose we have to see worn out misuse or incorrectly routed hoses sudden changes in engine speed if your speed of engine is all of sudden increase or decrease there are chances of pump failure and this type of material will break it and this will damage the system abrupt engine acceleration if all of sudden engine speed is increased and acceleration the aircraft is accelerated very high these things may happen sudden engine stoppage all of sudden you deaccelerate and engine you it was in full speed and all of sudden within fraction of second you have to pull down then there are chances of this vacuum system may be damaged the failure of the vacuum system may take place so how you will recognize it is called early recognition so pneumatic system health can be determined by the indications on either the vacuum gauge or the flags on the attitude indicator just you can see here that if there is some problem and it is not working properly a red color flag this red color flag will be visible okay and uh, uh, also here these lights red color lights will come on left and the right if it is left is not working towards the left red light if right is not working a right light will come out here is the gyro suction of mercury and these are the instruments they are working and in this how it is working inaccurate conflicting instrument information so if your systems are giving inaccurate or the conflicting results not giving proper values then you can say that there is going to be failure of the system suction pressure gauges indicates outside normal operating green range always you should work in the green range in the indicator spotted pneumatic system failure early reduces chances of spatial 
distortion. So if these things are increasing, it will increase the distortion of the system. So now I am talking about the emergency procedure. So in this we have activate a black, activate a backup power supply for the pneumatics. If the main system is failed, then you have to use a backup power supply for the pneumatics auxiliary vacuum pump if have. So there is auxiliary pump also that is to be used. Maintain partial panel instrument flying. Try to maintain the partial panel instrument. Don't operate all the instruments which are very much essential. Those only has to be operated. Cover up or simulate loss of flight instrument. Try to simulate and cover up the loss of flight instrument. Make timed turn. You just try to turn the aircraft in a given time. Notify ATC, inform the air traffic controller that my equipments are not working. They are not giving a proper value. In IMC, seek and fly VMC. It is instruments to visual. Okay, so in the visual flight, you have to obtain if your systems are not working properly. In place of instrument flying, you try to do the visual flying. So now, special disorientation. If your aircraft is disoriented from the given orientation, when your instrument disagree, confusion, dizziness and uncertainty can cause loss of control. Special disorientation occurs quickly when outside visual reference is poor such as night, IMC and the haze. <coughs> so in this type of condition, special disorientation may take place. It will give the confusion and dizziness and uncertainty, loss of control, special disorientation occurs quickly when outside visual reference is poor such as night IMC haze. Electrical power instrument, secondary air pump, electric auxiliary vacuum pump, pressure differential switch, redundancy options. So, Conclusion for this is pneumatic system fall at unexpected times. The danger in the event of pneumatic system failure is special disorientation. Have a good knowledge what power system on the aircraft you fly. Practice on the partial panel flying and be familiar with aircraft instruments. Whether you rent, own or operate, become familiar with the maintenance history of the aircraft. So these are things every engineer, every pilot has to understand that these points are very much essential for the any aircraft systems. Now I will discuss about some typical pneumatic systems and they are uh, shown in the block diagram here. Here this we can see that here we have the power component, then control element, processing element, input element and the supply elements. These are the elements. So all main pneumatic components can be represented by a simple pneumatic symbols. Here it is, if you can see like this, they are the actuators. Okay, if you have here, you have the pressure gauge, you have the pumps, all the things are explained by the symbols here. All main pneumatic components can be represented by simple pneumatic symbols. Each symbol shows only the function of the component it represents, but not its structure. Pneumatic symbol can be combined to form pneumatic diagram. A pneumatic diagram describes the relation between each pneumatic component that is the design of the system. A typical diagram of a pneumatic system is shown in the figure. Aircraft braking system. If we talk about the aircraft braking system, so it shows that 
how to break the aircraft on the ground. And also we have to see that how we can stop the aircraft or re reduce the speed of the aircraft in flying. Here we are very much discussing about only on the ground, uh, when aircraft is landed or when the aircraft is taxiing, what type of systems and how it can work. These things are to be explained. Aircraft braking system include aircraft disc brake in the landing gear used to break the wheel while touching the ground. These brakes are operated hydraulically or pneumatically. Levers are used in a few aircraft. Most aircrafts are capable of differential braking. These pneumatic systems are also used for the thrust reversal that allow thrust from the engine to be used to slow the aircraft. Air brakes, dedicated flight control surfaces that work by increasing drag, large drag parachute. So if you see here that this is the wheel, here is one, this is the drag and here we have one more like this and another is like this and there is a jack and if we apply here this pressure oh, hydraulic or pneumatic pneumatic pressure we have to apply so what will happen here is a piston and the cylinder it will compress here so this here is a abrasive lining in this abrasive linings are here in this in this and here it will hold this and in this way the brake system will happen so, thrust reversals are also there, air brakes are also there and large drag parachutes are there to stop the aircraft. So, these are the few types of air braking system of the aircraft. So, aircraft disc brake which I have shown you here. Thrust reversal, if this is the engine and if it is, if you turn this like this backward, aircraft speed will be reduced. So, this is called the thrust reversals. Okay, so next is the air brakes, I will show you and drag parachutes. These parachutes are normally used for the fighter aircraft like mix and all. Okay, so what happens that at during landing, this is the runway, aircraft is landing on the runway. You want to reduce the touchdown is here and you want to stop here. So what you have to do, it will land here and a parachute will open like this. So it will give the high drag on the runway and your aircraft will be stopped in a given runway. So this Drop parachutes are also used, air brakes are also used and this air brakes are used only for the flight when the aircrafts are flying. On the ground we use the disc brake, thrust reversals are also used, this can be used at any time. So I am just showing here a simple brake system. Just now I discussed that, as you can see here, brake pedals, these pedals are operated by the pilots pilot's feet, here they are compressing at a time, both the, both the pedals are pressed like this by the feet. So there is a piston and this is the cylinder, this piston will go down and this will pressurize this hydraulic system here or the pneumatic system, whatever is filled, it is pressurized and this pressure will act here and it here it will compress and here is a disc brake and in this disc brake, the system will operate, okay? So like this, okay, so like this, we can do it and this is called the left brake. 
assembly and this is called the right brake assembly okay so in this way it is working here it is called the master cylinder and parking brake valve so in case you want to use a parking brake just you lift up you just lift up this thing like this lift up you have seen in the car if you are putting like this this pressurized and wheels are brake is taking place so like this this simple brake systems are working further just i will discuss about the failures failure modes of the pneumatic system system and how it is failing system contamination if your air is mixed with the water some oil some impurities the contamination will make the system unhealthy and your system may fail solid particles in the system can damage pumps and the plug valves opening liquid from oil water or other engine cleaning solvent leak within the system so these are the things which make the system failure pneumatics used in small aircrafts i have shown this thing already first one is the gyro compass then artificial horizon then turn indicator so a non magnetic compass in which the true north direction is maintained by a continuously driven gyroscope whose axis is parallel to that of the earth rotation axis it informs artificial horizon what is the purpose of the artificial horizon it informs the pilot about the orientation of the aircraft with relative to the earth horizon turn coordinators it it tolls without the coordinated flight slip and skid of the left or the right so these things are and what are the components in this air pump vacuum regulator air filter overboard vent line gauges suction gauge it is called the gyro flag annunciator lights it will give the lights red lights are green light pneumatic air filter prevents system contamination removes air particulates clean air is essential for the good operation pneumatic pressure regulators prevents system over pressure and ensures proper calibration this is the operation of the pneumatic system and which we have seen in my earlier class also i have explained this boeing 757 uh, the system so this here we can see here that we have two engines one is the left another is the right it is the green side air cards are divided into two side green side and the red side so this is the left left and this is the right left pack and the right pack from the pilot perspective the pilot right is right and the pilot left is left so here we have we are taking from lp compressor or the hp compressor here also it goes to the filter and all here is the start valve then it goes to the ground pneumatic ground if you are aircraft engine is not operating the pneumatic system is connected here and the here wing anti icing here only in the red system it is it is there it goes for the tad prop potable water and hydraulic reservoir it goes and here if you see hydraulic reservoir is there wing anti icing it is used and ground pneumatic systems are also there so anti icing is done by the right green side and these things pitot tubes and all these things are done there is a auxiliary power unit this also gives supply in case of both engines are not working this will give supply to both the system so in this way your operation of the pneumatic systems are working next class i will be discussing about pneumatic system high pressure pneumatic system medium pressure pneumatic system low pressure pneumatic system then pneumatic system components i will be discussing again the air compressor relief valve control valves check valves restrictor filter desiccant moisture separator and 
pneumatic emergency landing gear extension system these all topics i will be discussing in my next class please take care and listen my next class it will be very good for understanding these all systems references i have taken from moir and the sea bridge aircraft systems mechanical electrical and avionic system next book is also from the moir and the sea bridge design and development of aircraft systems and introduction aia education series aia 2004 these books i am not just conversing but they are quite good so if you want to study it will give some uh, thoughts on the system so now i am in the near to end and any questions any queries i will feel very good to answer you are always welcome to send the query in my given email these are the this is my email you can send it please like and subscribe this channel so that i i will be encouraged and if any where you feel that there is some problem you are welcome to correct me and send the mails so, so that i can improve in my next lecture thank you very much for the joining this aircraft systems lecture in pneumatic systems and be tuned for my next lecture thank you very much like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates